I think this qualifies as my best flannel to date. everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kristen, and if you're new here, I sit down every week and share what I've been making, primarily knitting, there's been lots of quilting and garment sewing, uh, and you know, I do have a tendency to dive down lots of crafty rabbit holes because I, I must make all the things. If that is your jam, grab a cup of something and let's get into things. Uh, yeah, and I've got a new coffee mug this week, guys, that I'm very, very, very excited about. Uh, not sponsored by this brand, by the way, just to put it out there, but ever since I moved out to the suburbs, I feel like I've developed an addiction to places like Marshalls and Home Goods. <laughs> it's like I can't stay away, and I end up picking stuff up like this. I mean, the purple, the black speckles, it just spoke to my my gothic soul on so many levels. So home, home it came with me. Plus, I like it because it keeps my coffee warm. Lately, I've noticed in the morning when I make my coffee, I make the coffee. I put it on my desk and then I completely forget about it because I'm running around doing a million other things and then by the time I come back to my desk and sit down, it's cold. So this, I think, will come in handy. Uh, but anyway, I digress as usual. Uh, as far as any announcements are concerned, before I get into the nitty gritty of things, uh, the holidays are upon us. So that means that Kristen is going to need a little time off. So I haven't really blocked out any official time, but I'm thinking that half of the week leading up to Christmas and the week after towards New Year's, I'm gonna just block that time out for myself and take a break. So if you do not see me pop up on your YouTube feed, do not worry, all is well. I'm just I'm just taking some time for myself. Uh, that said, I hope you have some downtime planned for yourself as well. Lots of making time. I know we could all use it at this point. Marga the Mannequin, what is she wearing? This week she is wearing my Belmont A Cardigan by Gudrun Johnston. And holy cow guys, this is one of my favorite favorite makes that I've, or it's one of the things I've knit that I'm so proud of, just the way that it came together. The yarn is Tuku Wool in the Uyo colorway. I mean, clearly you, you know why I knit with it because it's this glorious heathered mauve that I absolutely fell in love with. Even though this cardigan knit up beautifully, the tale of woe here is that it does not fit me. Oh, yeah, as you probably know, I am an advocate of not swatching. I, I refuse to do it. I just don't have the time or patience. It's my own personal brand of crazy, do as I say, not as I do type of thing. Uh, but in this case, I really should have swatched because it's, I mean, the, the cardigan itself is supposed to have a little negative ease, but there's way too much negative ease in this cardigan. So unfortunately, it just, I'm not able to wear it and it's so sad. I love everything about this cardigan. I love the lace detail, I love the shaping. Um, I, even, I even used some very special buttons that a lovely viewer gifted to me when I, went, when I visited the Edinburgh Yarn Festival. And yeah, it's, uh, I just wish I could wear it. So I am thinking that in the new year, I may endeavor to make a new Belmont cardigan. And this time I will, I will swatch. Or do I need to, maybe I just make it two sizes larger. I'm tempted. <laughs> oh my goodness, see you guys? It's like, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm asking for trouble here. Moving along to works in progress, I have been making a lot of progress on my Kahlua cardigan by Thea Coleman, and it's living in my project bag by Katie Did. Uh, I absolutely, guys, this bag, this bag is everything. Katie, if you're watching, I, you know, Love it, love it so much. But yes, my, my Kahlua cardigan is living in here. And I think, where was I on it the last time I showed you? Um, I, I finished sleeves, so yes, we have the two finished sleeves here. Again, it's a cardigan that's knit from the bottom up, so she has you start out with the sleeves. And then I'm well into Body Island. And my friends, I'm enjoying this so much. I mean, it looks, it looks complicated, but again, it's one of those stitch patterns that's very intuitive, it's easy to memorize, and the only thing I really have to pay attention to is when I have to cable. And this cable stitch, very, very simple. Um, the one thing that I am doing is keeping the, the chart nearby so I know which row I'm on, because sometimes, because sometimes you can eyeball it, but other times, for the most part, I know I always mess up. So I'm, I'm just keeping the chart handy, making sure that I'm on the right row when I need to cable, if that makes any sense. Um, but you know, in the event that I do miss a row where I'm supposed to cable, I can always drop down the stitches and cable it there. It's a little bit of, 
you know, acrobatics when it comes to stitchery, but <laughs> it can be done. But yeah, what a great pattern this is. The yarn that I'm using is Cascade 220. Uh, it's over, where's my yarn? Let's see, there it is, it's hiding, it's hiding. <laughs> Here it is. So yeah, it's Cascade Yarns 220, super wash yarn. Again, my goal for this cardigan is just to have a simple everyday cardigan that I can chuck on, stay toasty during the winter winter months. And you know, when it gets a little, you know, when it when it's gotten a little ripe, I can just chuck it into the the wash and not worry about it felting or shrinking. And a viewer did mention that, you know, because it is super wash, Cascade 220 has a reputation for stretching after it's blocked. And that is the case for most super wash yarns. All super wash yarn has a tendency to stretch after it's wet and blocked. So usually for the most part, it's somewhere between one to two inches that it stretches in length. So that is something I'm definitely keeping in mind while knitting this. The needles that I'm using are Day and Nights by Knitter's Pride. And these guys, these needles, my friends, are so beautiful. They are kind of, I, they almost remind me of a uh, Two-Face from Batman because one side is dark and if you rotate it, the other side is light. And the whole concept behind these needles is that if you're using dark yarn, you have one side of the needles to turn to the light side so you can see your stitches. Likewise, if you're using darker yarn, you can rotate the needle to the dark side so you can see your lighter stitches. While I love that concept, at the end of the day, I don't think it really makes a difference. I guess if you are stitch count, if you're counting your stitches, that could come in handy. But I just like the way they look, honestly. And uh, they are, I have to say, they are super smooth to knit with. They just, the stitches, especially with this yarn, it just, they just glide and they just feel so... They just feel so nice. I, I truly love these needles. Uh, so glad that I picked them up. And that is all the knitting content that I have to share with you this week. I mean, seriously, I have not been able to put this cardigan down. It's it's wonderful. Uh, but that said, I do have a finished object to share with you. Last week, I mentioned that I'm endeavoring to recreate the Falconetti dress, which is a dress by a designer known as the Vampire's Wife. Uh, Kate Middleton has worn this dress. Uh, you've, you've probably seen it floating around the interwebs, but I am completely obsessed with it and I want it in my wardrobe. And looking at this dress, it like it's not it doesn't look that complicated to sew. And I did a little digging. I looked through all the big five patterns and stumbled on two patterns that I could franken piece together. And that was is I should say McCall's number M8032, this one. So you can tell that the top of it is very very similar to the Falconetti where, you know, it has you know, a very close neckline and ruffles at the sleeves. And then the only different thing is the gathered skirt. Um, so I kept looking and then stumbled on M8038, which forgoes the, the gathers at the waist and just kind of simply drops down. And all I would have to do is franken piece the top of this dress to the bottom of this dress, shorten this skirt and add a ruffle and we will have we will have a dead ringer, my friends. So I did make a muslin. I showed it on the last episode, but before I dip into the main fabric, which is this fabric right here, um, it's this fabric right here. It's it's this beautiful crepe silk chiffon that I miraculously was able to track down on the interwebs. While I love the original version, it's just a little too glitzy for, you know, you know, if, if I wear this dress, I'm probably going to be wearing it out to dinner with Dennis. Nothing, nothing too fancy schmancy like the Oscars, although it would be nice to go to the Oscars one year. I can dream. Before dipping into that fabric, I did want to do a quick practice run and I did have this glorious, plaid flannel uh, fabric in my stash. And at one point I was planning to use this fabric to make a bathrobe and it never came to fruition. So it's just kind of been hanging out. And I thought this would make a really cute dress. So, you know, it's winter and it's cozy and I like dresses and chucking them over leggings. I mean, what could be better? So here we are, it is done. I finished it over the weekend and I will stand up so you can see. I actually threw on a belt for for good measure because I think it just, I think it brings everything together and, you know, breaks up the plaid because otherwise I'm just, I feel like one big massive plaid. But here she is, yeah. I will turn around and holy cow guys, like I said, it fits like a glove. And that is because, as I mentioned, I did a small bust adjustment, an SBA. Because if you don't know, a lot of the big five patterns draft their patterns to have B cups and 
I'm an A cup, so a, a little bit of adjusting has to be made. So when you do a small bust adjustment, you're making some slashes in the in the pattern itself and overlapping them to take out the excess fabric. So again, if I were not to do a small bust adjustment, there would just be a lot of extra. There would, be, there would just be like a lot of extra fabric in this area. It would be kind of bunchy, and it really wouldn't look flattering at all. And I am so proud of myself because. This is the first time I've been successfully able to do a small bust adjustment and it worked out beautifully. I mean, I'll move my hair so you can see it, but yeah, it just, it lies flat against my chest. It, there, there's no extra fabric or sometimes when I sew garments, I'm left with some extra fabric here, like it gapes out and I don't know, it just, it fits the way it should. And I'm so, so happy. I mean, talk about a confidence booster because in the past when, you know, I did get things wrong, I just, you know, that's one of the things that made me want to give up garment sewing because I just couldn't get it. But this was, this was a victory and I, I'm definitely celebrating my friends. The other thing that I want to talk about is that because it's flannel, because it's plaid, a lot of extra care has to go into working with this type of fabric. I had to redo one of these darts a couple of times because, you know, it just looked uneven, it didn't look symmetrical, and especially working with flannel, the weave has a tendency to shift. So I really kind of had to take my time with this and make sure things were lining up and using my pins to make sure everything was pinned and aligned in place. A little tedious. I definitely bit off more than I can chew here, but I think it turned out Great. This weekend though, this weekend, we do have a holiday party to go to and the theme is to show up in your your best flannel and I think, I think this qualifies as my best flannel to date. So uh, yeah, I will be wearing this to a holiday party this weekend. <laughs> I've already started cutting into the main fabric and hoping to do a little vlogging with that, of course. And yeah, I'm, I'm just so excited about this, guys. And I definitely wanna make more versions of this dress. Maybe not so much with the, the skirt gathers, just because, you know, while I think it looks cute with this dress, I'm kind of, you know, I, I don't know. For me, like my style has shifted in a way where I'm, I don't really gravitate so much to the fit and flare look as much. So I don't know. I might play around and see, see what I come up with. But uh, of course, you know, when I do make the the actual Falconetti recreation. I'm going to be adding ruffles to the sleeves and obviously ruffles to the bottom and lengthening it. But anyway, so happy to have my garment sewing back. Uh, it feels it feels really good. And that, my friends, is all the creative content that I have to share with you this week. I've been I've been pretty pretty monogamous for the most part uh, this past week, which which I like. I like. I like when I'm monogamous with projects. It feels it feels like I'm actually getting stuff done. Uh, but I'm trying to think what else. As far as life stuff, other than my planned <laughs> my planned holiday hiatus coming up, uh, yeah, nothing nothing much to write home about. Uh, you know, Dennis and I, you know, we're, we have obviously plans to meet up with family and friends. I guess I'm just really looking forward to taking some time off for myself, especially after dying the uh, the Lost Reindeer Yarn Club. Oh my gosh, you guys! First of all. Well, thank you, thank you so much to anyone who purchased a uh, Lost Reindeer yarn collection. I mean, that was the longest. <laughs> It felt like the longest three weeks of my life. It, 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 just because there are eight different colorways in the collection and I was dyeing them in the midst of Thanksgiving, like the Thanksgiving holiday. So I, there was one week where I was just dying every single day and then the next week I was dying all the way leading up to Thanksgiving and then the week after we got back, I finished it up and <laughs> it was a lot of work, guys, I'm not gonna lie. And then packaging all of them, oh my gosh. If there's one thing that I love about my yarn dyeing business, it's gotta be packaging, like just making things look pretty. And I took joy in, you know, packaging up all of those skeins and tying them with bows and putting a tag on, anyway, it was it was great. But I, I'm not gonna lie when I say I feel, I feel very burned out at this point. So, um, you know, looking forward to some much needed downtime. All right, my friends, I'm gonna end things there. Thank you so much as always for hanging out with me. If you're new here and you haven't already, feel free to like and subscribe down below. I'm putting out videos for your viewing pleasure every week, most weeks, <laughs> unless, I, unless I take a break. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm very, very regular when it comes to uploading. And if you would like to support this channel and the work that I do here, consider becoming a member by clicking 
the join button down below. And for a monthly fancy schmancy cup of coffee, you can enjoy some bonus content from yours truly, including The Monday Waffle, a very casual vlog where I come at you every Monday and chat about what I got up to over the weekend, life-wise, craft-wise, my creative process. It's, it's a very casual hodgepodge of, you know, stream of consciousness, if you will. Um, and then also an invite to our private Facebook group, which is a lot of fun. Uh, so anyway, that said, enjoy the rest of your weekend and I will see you next time. Bye.